Hey guys, sneak peek number two for this week. This time around, I'm speaking with the brand new and newly elected captain of the Bearded Villains New Mexico, Mike T. Check out what this guy has to say. One brotherhood, one ship. Stay bearded, stay villain. Hello and welcome to the Heart of a Villain over on the YouTube channel. This is the Heart of a Villain podcast on YouTube. And today I am speaking with the brand new, not even 24 hours old captain of the Bearded Villains New Mexico, Mike T. Mike, how are you doing today, bud? I'm good. How about you? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Congratulations on the new appointment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very honored to, you know, have the, the brothers vote me in as captain. You know, Rudy's ran this ship for this ship. For three years, maybe a little over because he was he was captain when I first got in. I'm excited. You know, you're always nervous because it's something new. But, you know, nerves to me are always a good thing because it shows you care. So I'm ready to see what the future holds. Absolutely. One of our brothers in our chapter, he owns Dubay Beard Essentials. And I knew his little brother through mutual friends. And he's like, hey, man, my brother has a beard care company. So I bugged him for months to link me up. Well, finally I get a hold of this dude and he's like, you come up to Tucumcari, which is like a little podunk town about two and a half hours from where I live, uh, east. And it's a little cowboy town. They had this, uh, it was called rockabilly on the route. It was a rockabilly like car show festival on the table with some patches. And I'm like, Hey man, like, what is this bearded villains? Like what, like, what are you doing? He's like, you never heard of bearded villains? And I was like, no. He's like, we're a beard club. And at this point, I'm like, a beard club? Like, like what? I'm, I'm all about the facial hair. Like, this is cool. He's like, no, no, man. We're like a brotherhood. Like, we do charity. And I was like, okay. Like, what kind of charity? Because people will say they do charity, and they'll be like, oh, I clean up the park, like, every so often. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Like, you get into your community, but that's not really, like, charity. But, uh, you know, my mom's been a teacher, so I've always had a soft spot for kids. And the moment he said we do our big one is our toy drives for the children's hospital, I was like, "There you go." Okay, like that that interests me now. Yeah. Now you now you got my attention. And so, he goes, "It's gonna get a little weird. <laughs> just just ride it out." And I I looked at him, and in my in my head, I'm thinking, "What am I getting into?" <laughs> I'm looking forward to what we can do in the future. You know, yeah. I want to. Definitely do some more charity with the guys. I know the guys want to. Right. He made a really good connection with the car club. And this car club has been gracious enough to allow us to be a benefactor with them to help, you know, raise our toy drives up so we can get these children to the hospital some some toys. And what's nice is our July event really helps out the hospital because they put the extra toys aside and the kids can go on their birthdays and whatnot. And go pick out a toy outside of our our toy drop off, okay. which we actually go and hand out these toys to these kids. So what I would like to do is we've also done stuff with a local nonprofit called Mandy's Farm, which is a nonprofit that focuses on adults on the spectrum. Oh. So as much as I love kids, those kids grow up, and yeah. you know everybody gets hyper focused on children's programs. But when you're in a situation like these families are, you don't have a lot of options when they become 18. The state kind of goes, up. Oh, you're an adult, have fun. So Mandy's Farm has given the people of New Mexico and whoever they would like to include outside of the state if they need be, on, on a, a place where they can go. And what's different about this program is they allow the clients to pick what they want to do. So with People on the spectrum, they need a lot of structure and order, mm -hmm. but instead of being told you're going to do A, B, and C, they let them pick what they want to do. So they have, you know, horses, they have an all organic certified garden, they have a therapeutic pool, they have art, like they get to choose what they want to do. So it really gives them a home feel because what they do as well, besides having a day program, they house six adults six women and six men in two locations. So they actually stay wow. there 24 hours. Cool. With me, I've always felt leadership is the biggest support role out of anything in any group. And I just want to be able to be supportive of my chapter with as well having their support 
but the biggest thing is I want to be able to support them and what they want to do. BV is a we thing, not a me thing. You know, yeah. we do have some good connections in New Mexico with one of our members. His wife runs. It's called Elevate the Spectrum. It's mm -hmm. a nonprofit for children on the spectrum. Okay. Uh, they're having a beard comp. It's not postponed yet or canceled, so it will be at the end of April if it does get to to go on. So there will be that, and it's actually going to be held inside of one of the biggest breweries in New Mexico. My thing is, is once it's done, we're going to get to come out stronger and better. Absolutely. That and that's everybody in BV. Well, I look forward to, to seeing you how, hopefully down the road at some of these bigger events, um, and we'll definitely be in touch once we're able to you know, get the, get off the ground and you can get your feet underneath you and get going on some things oh, yeah. for sure. I'll check back with you. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Hey, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks again for meeting up with me and uh, have a great weekend and uh, be safe. You as well. All right.